FSD version 13 is doing real good in a lot of environments, but it's not perfect and perfection is what we need. Is what we really need version 14? Is what we really need AI 5 or hardware 5, if you still call it that? We don't know, but we've got some pretty good indications of what may be on the horizon. I'm joined by my buddy Herbert from Brighter. He is here to make us, you know, that brighter. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Aza. <laughs> So Herbert, I uh, have seen this fun little story here that I wanted to share. This is a discussion of what's coming next, what's coming next in version 14. And uh, there's some speculation. Uh, we don't know when that will happen. We assume it will happen. Even if version 13 becomes unsupervised, there will always be another version. At some point, improvements will will always come. Is that part correct? Improvements will always come. I can okay. guarantee that. <laughs> Yeah. What what we have now is the worst that it will it will ever be. Yeah, that's probably yeah. the true statement. Uh huh. Maybe that's my thumbnail. The worst it will ever be. Uh, the <laughs> standout feature in fourteen will be auto regressive transformers. It's I assume that's a yeah. type of Autobot, but auto regressive <laughs> uh, process. Can you tell me about this? It process sequential data in time using that information to predict. Uh, it's more predictive than the current model is what we understand. What do you know about that? Yeah, you know, I don't know much a lot about this. I'm not an AI expert, but what I understand is that it's learning. Well, I could read the last line, right? Learns from past sequences and improves its predictions over time, adapting to different driving uh, scenarios. And so that is a AI, uh, right? That is learning by itself. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's it's no longer needing to uh, be fed data to learn from that data it's actually able to test its own theories to test itself. And that's autoregressive. So when, um, when, and again, I, I might butcher this, but when, you know, um, when, when Google DeepMind first came out with their ability to beat the game Go, AlphaZero came out. Initially what they did was they trained uh, the computer, the neural net machine learning against humans playing videos of them playing the game Go. And so then the neural net learned how, what the best humans would do, they would do. Now that would never beat the best human, but it learned how to play the game. And then what they did was they then pitted one neural net against another neural net, took the human out of it, but still based on them playing against self stuff. That's the one that finally beat Lee Sodal, the best Go player in the world. Then what they did was they let that, that neural net not only play millions of games against each other, but it learned, let it decide to, do, to, to, to teach itself what to do itself on its own, right? Figuring things out. And that's where I think that's what this guy's gonna to get to. It's like, you know, once you let this uh, be able to self-train, self-learn, and then decide what's next best, that's when we'll really see big improvements. I don't know if that's what's next. The second part of that term is transformer, which is a component used to understand the relationship of elements inside a time sequence. It identifies which parts of the input are most crucial allowing the system to prioritize information, much like a human would. Uh, I can recognize that even though that pedestrian is just one pedestrian way over there, that their direction they're heading is something I need to pay attention to uh, because they may intersect with traffic. It might recognize that a blinking turn signal is more important than the color of the car when predicting a lane change. Okay, I mean, that's an interesting example. So it will also have a larger model and context size. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I think this is, I think, the more important thing. Uh, I'm not sure about transformers um, and auto aggression. I don't know that. I, that's again, not an AI expert. But, you know, do you believe that the uh, advancements in the key metric that we're following here, right, which is reduction in critical uh, miles between critical interventions, is that correlated with the amount of compute that Tesla's able to have and the amount of data they able, they're able to put in? And I think that it is highly correlated. ARK Invest just dropped their newest report on RoboTaxi, and they have a table that basically says on the bottom, if we're currently at, what, 50,000 H100 uh, equivalents, that's how, what Cortex has in uh, Texas, Giga Texas, to be able to build on, on RoboTaxi. And then there's plans for it to be 100,000, 150,000, 180,000. They think that by we get to 180,000 uh, you know, H100 equivalents, by October of this year, if that compute grows, 
that's your best chance to to kind of see the exponential growth, the, the exponential growth in miles per critical intervention, the improvement in that. And that's where we'll get to for 14, whatever the numbers are. I don't know what numbers are going to use, 13.6, 14, whatever. What matters is, are you going to get to 10,000 uh, miles between miles between critical intervention? That is the equivalent of one human driving for one year. So you are driving one year, you only have one critical intervention. That's a good milestone. That's not enough. You need to get to, I, I don't know what the number is, 700, uh, 70,000 miles per, per, towards critical intervention. And that's when you get safer than the average human out there. And you will get there if you just grow the compute. And we know now that Tesla kind of announced in their earnings call that they are going to be building these compute. They are spending the same amount of money they spent last year, about 10 to $12 billion. And so they probably can build double, and I don't know what prices are going to be with chips and so forth, but they can probably get you to that, you know, 150,000. And that's what we're hoping to see. We've got, we've seen quite a bit of uh, what's been built, and we're hoping that Cortex can actually get us there into the next version. Uh, lever it will, we expect it to leverage audio input for emergency vehicle detection. That's something valuable. And I've had people counter this saying, well, how will the car know if it's just uh, on the radio, if it's a siren on the radio? Mm -hmm. And my answer yep. is the same way you would. You exactly. would, you would <laughs> uh, couple it with visual information. If there's a siren, but you cannot see the emergency vehicle, I don't think you're expected to pull over. I don't pull over if I don't, if I don't know where an emergency, just the fact that they exist is not sufficient to make me stop. Oh, there's so many ways. I mean, just like uh, I, I have no doubt hu computers and AI can figure things out much better than even humans, right? A superhuman, this ability that, well, is the sound coming from the actual, you know, uh, speakers of the car? You know, because <laughs> the Tesla can actually tell you which, where the sound's coming from versus it coming outside of the car versus us humans. Sometimes we don't know, did it come from that speaker that's just, you know, two feet away from me or did it come from, you know, something about a hundred feet away from me? Yes. These guys will you know, be able to do that better. I am confident they will have a better understanding of that than perhaps you and I. Then we get to hardware five. Is, is this going to be yeah. dependent on that? Yes, I do believe so. So this is a very interesting. I think they said, yep, it's going to be a revealed in the second half of 2025. It's very likely and almost kind of like, um, you can almost bank on it that the cyber cabs, uh, will have AF, hardware five, AI five, cause that's going to be mass scale next year. And I think you just told me earlier that, uh, you shared with me this idea that Giga Texas might already have a production line building some versions of it. Um, but I think that the model wise that they're going to release that they're going to use for CyberCab uh, for, for this might have AI5, Hardware 5 they might. by the second half of the year. So when they say June, when they go, okay, we're going to launch it in June, that's to me a signal that they actually had Hardware 5 ready already as opposed to it being coming at the end of the year. I, I could be completely wrong. Some people are telling me, no, it's not going to come. Don't expect it to come until, you know, Elon says second half, think January of next year or, you know, first quarter of next year. So I don't think it's necessary because obviously you've got hardware for, we all seeing how great AR, uh, uh, FSC 13 is working on it. I don't think that FSC, let's call it 14, will require hardware five. But if you are Tesla and you're launching your first go at it, you're going to dip your toe into RoboTaxi. You want to have the best, high, fastest inference. You want to have the, the, the best, you know, tech compute that you have to be able to process. You want to throw in more. So I, I think they are correlated. I think you will see hardware far in the model Ys that they're going to use in the RoboTaxi prototype, uh, in the RoboTaxi commercialized plans in June. And how crazy would it be? Well, let's look at our timelines. Hardware one, September of 2014. Mm -hmm. Hardware two, October of 2016. So about three years. Mm -hmm. Hardware uh, two and a half. I mean, hardware three, 2018. Uh, and then we get to AI four or hardware four, depending which one you choose to call it. I purchased a car with hardware four. That's what it is. Uh, was in December of 22, but really early 23. So 2025 would be a little sooner, but not mm -hmm. radically sooner. This isn't out of line with what we've seen 
would it come would it arriving six months earlier than it has historically surprise you in any way well i mean i guess it would surprise me because it's we're talking about you know like we we often want things to happen sooner but these things take time <laughs> this is high technology here so yeah. well second half of this year would be a, a little bit ahead of schedule uh but it is yeah, it is coming. And to the people saying, well, if if AI4 can solve it, why do we need AI5? Well, your laptop can do everything it needs to do, but when you buy a new one, you get a faster chip. It's just how it works. Yeah. Uh, it's faster means also more efficient. It means it can do the same computations on less juice. That improves your range, your efficiency. And if there is something crazy where it needs to go into like a, a, a ridiculous mode where it's using all of its uh, capacity, it has more capacity to use. And Elon had even hinted that perhaps we'd be able to rent out our compute space. Uh, you'd like to have more and more efficient compute space to rent out if that eventuality were to come to pass. I don't know. I think, I think uh, hardware five, AI five is coming. Uh, do you think there's going to be any correlation between AI 5's arrival and uh, version 14? Yes, that's absolutely, that's exactly what I'm expecting. I think that, they'll, you know, they're going to roll out version 13 and then they'll want the best compute, you know, in computer that they have, right, as uh, i5. So, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it's necessary. I've heard that people think that you can do, you know, we call it FSC 4, version 14 on existing AI 4 cars. That's fine. I think I agree with that for sure. It can be, but just like it depends. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I would just say that either is probably fine. I have something else to share. I do yes, agree please. with what Brian, what Brian Wang said. Brian Wang was on my show one time and he said this. So you've heard Elon saying that if you have a hardware three or AI three car, right? The, the old model threes, whatever. And Elon said, we're going to be able to, we're going to go ahead and pay for the upgrade right for that to hardware four cars it only if you own fse so he just said that again in the earnings call i actually agree with brian that he's thinking that well why would they do it hardware four it would give you it would give you ai5 skip straight would to give five. You ai5 and then if they did that is that fair for the people who bought the ai4 cars and so brian's thinking that Every car, if you submit it to FSD and RoboTaxi and you submit it, this will be like next year, right? Second half of next year, you are able to submit your car. They probably, it's, it's to their benefit, to Tesla's benefit, to upgrade everybody to the latest compute chip. It might cost them two grand, three grand to retrofit your car, but they'll make that back up. So they'll say to you, you know, pay for it. We'll upgrade you or yeah. And then... And then we will reimburse you for it as you use the car into RoboTaxi, something like that. It yeah. just makes sense. I love it. Guys in the comments, what do you think? What are we talking about here? What are we doing? Uh, what are your concerns? Uh, share them in them comments below. Everybody else, like, subscribe, do what you do. Uh, head over to Herbert's channel. Rumor has it he has recently hit a uh, 100,000 subscribers, uh, maybe not as of this recording, but certainly by the time it goes out. And everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when you're driving yourself around <laughs> hands-free.